right, so all threaded and ready to tie on. I need a little more length here to tie on. I haven't left myself quite enough, so I'm just going to unravel a little bit, unroll a little bit, and then starting with, from the center, roughly, I'm gonna grab some bunches and start tying. Now also the, the length of your tie on um, is going to help determine how long your fringe is going to be. So if you're going to have a fringe, keep that in mind. In the lead up to this project, a few people were asking me about alternative yarns. This yarn is an acrylic, although I don't typically use acrylics myself. I know a lot of my students do. And so I wanted to give people the opportunity who do use acrylics to do an acrylic project. Well, an acrylic warp anyway, because I'm not using acrylic for the weft, but I it was difficult to find a, an a good substitute because um, well number one because of the colors the colors are so vibrant and particular and run in a gradient so it can be a little bit difficult to find colors however I did find a couple that I think would be good substitutes and you can find them on my blog along with the pattern with the post um, I've got some there that are wool and some that are cotton. It's actually very difficult to find yarn that's dyed in this way without having um, at least some acrylic in it, but I did manage to find a couple. Another alternative is to look for some hand dyed yarn or to dye some yourself to get this similar effect. But there are a lot of really great dyers, independent dyers out there. You could have a look on Etsy or wherever you normally buy yarn and it's very likely that you'll find something. All right, so I'm all tied on. Now all that's left to me is to put my separators in. So I'm gonna go into the up shed first, put my first cardboard separator in. If you prefer to use waste yarn for this step, you can absolutely do that. Now into the down shed. I like to use cardboard strips because it's quick and easy and you know, gives pretty good results. Okay, so I beat them into place and then I need to just tighten up my tension. Nicely. And then I'm ready to start weaving. So to start weaving, we're gonna start off with some lovely plain weave. Now, if you're going to do a hem stitch, I recommend that you start by leaving a tail of yarn. I'm actually gonna start in the down shed because I usually associate my shuttle position with the up or the down shed. So the up shed, usually for me means my shuttle's on the left, down shed means it's on the right. That's one way that I keep track of things. Um, so I'm, I'm starting in the down shed. And I'm gonna measure off for my hem stitch about four lengths of my weft. And I'll just leave that dangling down and then bring that through and beat and going into the up shed. So I'm just starting off with really simple plain weave. Make sure you pay nice attention to your edges. I'll leave a link down below for my video on edges. If you're not quite sure, into the down shed again.
And for my weft, I am using a fingering weight superwash wool and I'm using it in dark gray. Dark gray is one of my favorite colors to use when I have a bright warp. So we are starting out with plain weave, but we're not continuing right through the piece with plain weave. And you'll see what I mean when we get to that part. I just do a bit of plain weave to make a sort of base at either end of the scarf. So we'll do it at the other end as well. Makes a really good base for your hem stitch. And I also just like the way it looks. All right, I think I'll do two more picks. So that was 10 picks of plain weave to start with. Now, if you are hem stitching, I recommend that you do it at this point. You can, if you use separators, you can wriggle them down a little bit to give yourself that extra visual space. And you can thread up your extra yarn in the tapestry needle and do your hem stitch. I'm going to leave another link down below for how to hem stitch because I've already made a bunch of videos on that. I'm going to use my jumbo gold bent tapestry needle, bent tip, which is like my favorite needle ever. I talk about these a lot in blog posts and various places. Um, if you want to know where to get these, I'll leave you a link down below. And also if you're curious, I'm going in four warp threads deep and two weft threads deep. 